Hello all, welcome back to School Year Forensics. Today we have Ankita Sikaria. She has completed her master's in forensic science. She had two years of experience in teaching and she specialized in question documents and fingerprint examinations. Hello ma'am. Hello Navita. Hello Navita. Today we can talk Hi. about counterfeit currencies. Hello Navita. First of all, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting here me for the session. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, you so much for coming also. Okay. So shall we begin, ma'am? Yeah. Okay, so first question is what is a counterfeit currency? Okay, so counterfeit money you can say it is the currency that is produced without the legal sanction of the state or government to resemble any some kind of official form of currency you can say that may be confused for the genuine currency uh, if we talk in uh, in layman's language or the simple language that counterfeit money uh, simply they are not the genuine one but uh, they have been made to look exactly like the genuine ones in order to deceive people. Uh, in this, uh, uh, the people who do these type of work, uh, you can call them fraudster and uh, they may hand over any imitation currency in exchange for real bank notes. Uh, under uh, you can say for uh, various excuses like uh, they can offer you any kind of help or uh, uh, for the uh, changes for making change so just simple that uh, manufacture of false money for any type of gain so it's the kind of forgery also okay you can but uh, it is different from the other act of forgery so you can say that it can be treated uh, as a separate type of crime okay ma'am so the next question is how can i identify a forged knot okay for the uh, identification uh, if you want to identify a forged note so for that you have to aware you are aware of the features so the security features uh, which are present in a genuine currency notes because if you don't even know the genuine one how can you differentiate from the fake one okay so uh, to spot any fake note uh, you can check the say the typography of the words like uh, uh, it is written there reserve bank of india uh, if you say in a fake note it will appear thicker and uh, in the real one it will be smoother than the fake one then you can check the micro letters between uh, gandhiji's image and rbi uh, navita i think uh, it's better if i show you the security features rather than okay, uh, verbally telling them okay so just yeah, give me a give me a minute give me a minute Yes, Shama. Is my screen is visible? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Okay. So uh, the security features which I was talking about, uh, let's just say uh, take a 2000 rupee note, the new one after demonetization. Okay. So uh, here the, if you see the number one, that is the see-through register. This is the feature that uh, if you see this in the, uh, you can say the transmitted light. So then only you can see it. Then the second one is the latent image. In this, uh, uh, you have to uh, tilt the note in the 45 degree angle. Then you are able to see the latent image. 
then for the it's a 2000 rupees denomination so here this number three it is written with the devnagari script then comes uh, gandhi ji's image then here is yes, uh, just uh, take care of this uh, fifth one that is the micro letters which i told you about that in uh, micro letters here it is written rbi and 2000 so with the naked eyes it can't be seen for uh, that uh, we have to see under microscope then we will come forward for this uh, that is what we call the security thread security thread for the real one we talk about the real one so it is incorporated in the note but uh, if in the fake note it is just you can see that uh, it can be drawn or just printed over it and the uh, one more thing about the security thread that uh, color shifting that uh, it uh, changes its color from uh, blue to green and green to blue when tilt at a different angle okay then comes the security clause here it is on the seventh number then eighth number is the watermark type the, that uh, on the transmitted in the transmitted light only you can see the gandhi ji's image then comes the these uh, number panel this number panel it is uh, uh, you can it is uh, written here also and on the left side also at the top most of the left side so in the fake one uh, you can uh, see it for the formatting of uh, this number panel uh, maybe alignment may be somewhat different uh, or uh, this uh, see in this it is increasing so in the fake one maybe it is somewhat uh, different it may be decreasing or maybe the middle one is the uh, higher than the uh, other zero or whatever the number panel it is okay then for uh, this is written uh, 2000 rupees is written on the number 10 if you say about so this is also color shifting from blue to green for this we have to tilt the uh, rupee then national anthem then we will go for this here you can say a uh, uh, you see a uh, uh, rectangular box so for different denomination it will have different shape like uh, for 2000 rupee note it is a rectangular box uh, in 500 rupee it is circular and this i say about 200 rupee note so uh, it is in h letter shape so it is different for different denomination so you can have a look on this also then comes the uh, this is so important uh, on the number 13th that is these are called the bleed lines so these are have these have intaglio printing so uh, you can say that the jo on 2000 rupee note it is in seven in uh, seven bleed lines for 500 it is uh, five bleed lines will be there then for 200 it will be four bleed lines and between them uh, two circles are present so for uh, different different denomination they will be different okay so if we talk about on of the reverse side of the note so again for the different denomination we have different uh, thing like on 2000 rupee note it is the motif of mangalyan then uh, for uh, 500 it is red fort so it is different for uh, different denomination so by observing keenly observing these uh, security features we can easily identify the forged note okay ma'am So the next question is, how can I protect myself from the forged notes? Okay, this is similar to your last question. So it's so simple by spotting the counterfeit money. Okay, the the features that I told you about. Uh, in this, I can just add it that uh, yes, also the dimensions also we see the dimensions also that for. Uh, 2000 rupee note uh, i think it's the uh, 170 by 66 yes the dimension for 2000 so for the different denomination it is different one so uh, for the color shifting uh, technique that uh, what we talk about 
so we have to look closely at the printed material on a note to verify its authenticity okay so just we have to take the time to pay attention to anything whatever we observe like uh, uh, if we talk about uh, the watermark if we talk about the fake one fraudster who create these counterfeit currency they use uh, such uh, heavy oil or grease to make the watermark so due to this the watermark it ends up looking thicker than usual okay so just uh, make sure that you stay alert while using cash just take a couple of minutes to ensure that you use uh, authentic currency if we talk about coins because not only notes coins also are counterfeited so they are prepared by the stamping process so while uh, during the process uh, they leave the marks on the stamp like uh, imperfection will be there on the surface of coin so when counterfeit coins are made uh, they are made by pouring molten uh, metal into a mold and uh, this one will not show any such type of marking so just we have to pay a little attention then only we can protect ourselves from these counterfeit money okay ma'am so what shall i do if i receive a counterfeit currency okay if you receive uh it's simple just uh, but there is a little bit process that uh, first uh, we have to write uh, initial on that note and uh, the date also because uh, don't know uh, on which day you may encounter with that note so just type the date and your initial and just try to limit the handling of that note and then just carefully place it any envelope or something and then surrender the note or coin uh, of to your nearest police uh, station or the police officer whom you trust and uh, 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 for the investigation by filing fir in the prescribed format or uh, one more thing you can do you can surrender it to any secret service special agent also this we can okay ma'am so who is in charge of designing new security features for the bills okay uh, for this uh, the bureau of engraving and printing they create the new ways uh, uh, and the, they are the in charge of designing the new security features and uh, which comes under the department of treasury Okay, ma'am. So the next question is, what future changes are going to be made by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing? Okay, this is a very sensitive question because they won't reveal it. But uh, still, whatever <laughs> I just know, I will just tell you. Um, uh, in the new process, it will uh, overprint the serial numbers and seals in sheet format. and then those sheets uh, it will be processed on cutting inspection and packaging machine so this will sort individual notes by inspection result okay so uh, and the existing bank note processing system machinery uh, it will be used as a part of the new finishing line and yes uh, one more thing i need to add here that uh, sometime uh, before that uh, there were rumors that uh, instead of gandhi ji's image uh, rbi will uh, use uh, rabindranath tagore or dr apj abdul kalam image so rbi clarified this that uh, no such changes are being need to done gandhi ji's image will be there okay ma'am so how are the counterfeit currencies examined by experts okay first uh, like normal examination that we will go for the visual examination uh, so the visual examination simply it is uh, uh, done uh, uh, 
uh, that we will see that note in a transmitted slide that the security features that i told you about the watermark then security thread latent image color shifting and so many things we can simply observe in the transmitted or in the uh, tilted image type okay then uh, after that uh, we can also hold the light source that uh, to make sure it is authentic or not then we examine it uh, in the uv light also some features can be seen in the uv light also then for more technically we say that there is one device that we use for examining question document that is vsc video spectral comparator so we will use this also because uh, we will use for examining and photographing this note in uh, different lighting condition so it will reveal the latent images and watermark latent images we can uh, see at acute angle uh, under the reflected light and watermark is uh, viewed under uh, transmitted light so we can uh, examine like this and if you say about the chemical test so for this uh, solution is a simple solution uh, that solution uh, it may be of uh, any aqueous alcohol solution Uh, that have any chemical thickness so we use for detecting the counterfeit paper currency only the paper currency so that solution is applied on that paper currency uh, which have the ink printed on if the paper currency is counterfeit so the test solution it causes the ink to release from the paper currency and if the uh, the paper currency is genuine so the ink will not release from the paper uh, from the paper currency okay ma'am so how is the source of counterfeit currencies found out okay for this we uh, use the device that uh, spectrophotometer uh, when we use this a uh, full chemical profile of the money uh, it can be discovered you can say in few seconds only so this is a very simple and the quick test that can disclose the process that is used to manufacture the counterfeit okay ma so which is the most common place from where the counterfeit currencies are collected Okay, so for this, uh, I'll tell you about the all over the world. So, according to the Federal Reserve Bank, U.S. dollar it is the most commonly counterfeited currency in the world. Okay, ma'am. So, what is the common myth about counterfeit currencies? Okay. common myth uh common myth we can say see here we can apply the law of forensic science that law of individuality that uh, everything is unique so in this counterfeit currency also we can apply uh, this that uh, like in manufacturing process in the genuine one also that while the manufacturing may be some defect can come so in counterfeit currency also sometimes it happen for the same denomination the differences will be there in one note it will be somewhat uh, uh, you can say in the latent image or uh, you can say the security thread uh, in the security thread you can see that loophole but in some note uh, or some other note you can see the different loophole so it will not be the same so this is a myth that if it is a counterfeit so this particular loophole or this particular security thread will be present or absent so uh, actually uh, in reality it is not like that uh, we can have uh, different different mistakes and uh, it is also said uh, among people uh, 
that uh, counterfeit uh, currency it can be examined uh, you can say very um, easily but sometimes it doesn't happen so this is a very common myth you can say okay ma'am so what is the biggest challenge in forensic career according to you okay biggest challenge uh see uh here uh, we all know the literal meaning of forensic that is uh, belonging to the court that whatever we are doing investigation examination whatever we just do for the same thing that is for the purpose of justice so in a forensic field you can say in a, if a person is in forensic career so the biggest challenge for anyone that no innocent should be convicted 100 criminals they can be released that's not a big deal but if a single innocent is convicted then you can say this is a big question mark on uh, us on forensic experts so our just our aim is to uh, prove or disprove any fact uh, which helps in bringing the justice to someone so just we have to make sure that no innocent should be convicted and uh, uh, this will be done on the basis of evidence or the facts that we recover from the crime scene or from any another source okay ma'am so what is the most important lesson you have learned over your career in forensics okay this lesson yes actually i learned the lesson after coming in this forensic career uh, see usually what happens that uh, we don't have consistency over something that if we try out something so for some time we will consistent on that then after some time that just leave it it's no but when you enter in forensic field you have to be focused on your work so this is a very basic thing that i learned but most of the people uh, don't follow it so uh, this let me that uh, we have to be able to stay on a single task in period and that is of frankly i am saying for boring work also but you have to stay there then only you are able to find something okay ma'am so what is the one piece of advice that you would like to give to someone who is coming to the field of forensic science okay so this is also related to the that lesson i uh, got to know when enter in this forensic field that see if someone has chosen forensic as a career then he has to be patient and hard working because uh, so uh, if we talk about india see here forensic is in developing phase we can't say that is fully developed it is in developing phase so he has to do a lot of hard work and be patient and one more thing a person should have that uh, he should have a scientific approach for everything because whatever we encounter the evidences or anything we should have a scientific approach to uh, further investigate in that and also he should have good communication and most important critical thinking skill because every day we can encounter with the new things uh, that may be not happened before or that may be not present in the book so we have we should have that critical thinking skill okay ma'am so who is the number one in the field of counterfeit exam okay number one first of all uh, this counterfeit examination it's not such a division you can say in a forensic field it also comes under the question document 
so if we talk about question documents so there are so many people associated and uh, i think according to me it's not appropriate to take any one name and also i am not the right person to tell who is number one but if you want to know that just uh, related to question documents we can say that uh, albert s osborne not number one i can say but uh, we know na father of question document so we can say like okay ma'am so what are the three books you would recommend to our readers okay. books uh, i told you na that actually this counterfeit currency it's not a broad topic and it comes under question document and uh, also the details for this are they are not provided openly for all by government of india due to security reasons also so only some of the information we can say regarding the security features and that too also in a limited number of pages okay so if we talk about books we can refer to the general forensic book in that so we can find about the question document like uh, the ink we are using in making this currency then the uh, currency paper so for that we need to study the question document uh, not three books i will recommend more for question document like albert s osborne huber and but in some general book you can find some little content like uh, susan bell i will comment and more than book i would like to suggest to go for research paper if you really want to know about the counterfeit currency and uh, if you really want to differentiate among the counterfeit uh, and the genuine currency in research paper you are able to find okay ma'am so the final question where our listeners can find your online oh online <laughs> okay so uh, they can find me on linkedin with my name ankita sikoria and also uh, mail they can mail me on ankita forensic at the red gmail.com and if anyone is using facebook also then with the same name ankita sikoria they can find me there and uh, whatever doubt for any question or uh, any type whatever they have they in, in their mind they can ask me i will be available there okay ma'am so thank you thank you so much for being part of school year thank you navita thank you for inviting me here it's a, really it's a good passion to interact with you thank you so much thank you ma'am